three hours of podcasting on a Sunday, which actually is a good use of like an overcast Sunday, I would say. But let's start with what stood out to me over the weekend. It's probably what not a lot of people are talking about. Women's boxing is kicking a lot of butt right now. We had Chantel Cameron versus Mary McGee, which felt like a great fight, really good fight. Chantel Cameron, as I've told my listeners, she feels like a generational type talent. We have Michaela Mayer and Maeva Hermaduch, which was like Herm- a Herm- yeah. which was like a beat em up fight. And then we had, oh my God, this is gonna be such a hard name for me to say. Alicia Baumgardner oh. stopping yeah, Terry <laughs> Harper. Um, because I, I once called her Alicia Baumgardner and she got so pissed. So that's why I always have to really think about how to say that. Um really a special time for women's boxing to the point where it feels like the women's fights are for maybe the second or third week in a row outshining the men. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. Um, although it's pretty hard to outshine Munguia Rosado, but um, they definitely up there. I mean, if you think about it, the, the weekend, like three things happened this weekend. The, uh, Kiko Martinez, you know, I think he had the biggest win of the weekend, period. Uh, up, up there with uh, Alicia uh, Baumgartner and Gabriel Rosado and uh, Jaime Munguia. Like, those are the three fights that stick out to me this weekend. I didn't get to see, unfortunately, I didn't get to see the, the I didn't get the chance to see um the, the Benavidez brothers, but the, the fights I did see is those three. Put them in any order you want. Well, that's actually good because I actually have another guest coming on later who was live at the Benavidez fight. So that kind of makes you the perfect guest because then you don't have to worry about that fight. But for me, (laughs) Alicia Baumgartner stopping Terry Harper. Terry Harper is someone that I hadn't super followed, but I've seen this story over and over. And I know my UK friends get mad at me, but the UK fan base is very passionate. And I've seen this story with Josh Warrington with Kid Galahad, with Ricky Burns, with Kevin Mitchell, where you hear about this fighter who can beat any world-class fighter. And when she was in there with Baumgartner, it just looked like she was too slow. She relied on toughness and she relied on power. And what Baumgartner was doing was very simple. It appeared she was just throwing her right hand when Harper looked to throw hers and her right hand was getting there way faster. And it was It was that way from the first round onward. And as Harper got slower in the fight, it actually became much more devastating. Yeah, I I agree with that. Uh, I also believe Alicia was a Alicia was setting her up with a jab and she was keeping uh, Harper at a good distance to where she could place the right hand perfectly. And she was landing a few good right hands earlier until the one that just was all she wrote. But I believe the jab and the movement was just kind of throwing Harper off. Like, I mean, me personally, I've never looked at Harper as anything special. Like, she's solid. I felt like she deserved to lose against uh, Natasha Jones. And that was a draw. So I'm not too surprised Alicia beat her. Well, to me, the big thing that I saw in this fight was, you said it, that beyond the right hand was, she fought someone that used a jab and she kind of fights like Angulo to the extent where she's not going to jab her way in. She's going to physically tough her way in. And then once she's in there, she's going to work a lot. And Alicia didn't allow her to come forward. And what this really showed is if you kind of keep a stick on her and throw while she's in range where she doesn't like to throw, she literally just walks into things and I don't think it was ring rust. I don't think that it was time out. I think this is just the type of fire she is. And the hard part, it's like in the undercard, there was a guy named Chris Billiam Smith. And it's like, this story feels very similar to what's going to probably happen to him. Physical (laughs) toughness has a ceiling, right? Physical toughness has a ceiling. You either get older and you're not as tough because you've taken damage or you run into a fighter who's more talented, who you're just going to get beat up because you can't out tough them because their skill set is too dynamic for just toughness. Yeah, the cheese man syndrome. The mofo cheese man. But I think that's that. Um, 
before we get hitting on the Munguia, uh playing the classics, as you mentioned, Kid Galahad lost to Kiko Martinez. Kind of um, reminded me of a fight I reference a lot that I think no one cares about on this program is what's up everybody it's your good friend lukey and i appreciate you watching this video now if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe to the channel leave a comment with suggestions which is the reason you're seeing this video and also if this is just a single video and you're saying where's the full interview look at the upper left hand corner and you can find the full interview or check in our video section we're rapidly trying to improve this channel and it takes support from not just myself, but also people that enjoy the channel to keep me motivated and try to give you the best boxing content. Be sure to go to itrboxing.com for all of your boxing needs. This is Luke.